record on this computer. Okay. So uh, today's class is about buyer consultations. Um, in my humble opinion, if you do not do a buyer consult, you are just making your life a thousand times harder than it has to be. Uh, you are also not doing um, what your client really deserves, right? Now, remember, the National Association of Realtors says that um, the most the biggest thing that buyers want from their real estate agent is to explain them um, the, you know, the whole process. So that's a huge number, right? That is a big number. Um, so keep that in mind. And that's why it's important that if you don't do a buyer consult, then you're letting down 54% of the people that you work with. Okay. Uh, so how many of you guys do a buyer consult with 100% of your clients. Right, I know you're new, you haven't had anybody yet. I try to, but try. there better. is no try. <laughs> right, because you can do it no matter what. I mean, there's no reason why you can't do it. Yeah, I think I have consistently for the most part recently. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're meeting them for the first time, if you're a, if you're a team, um, it's very, very important to do a buyer consult. Uh, we used to do our buyer consults with us and our buyer's agent. And then once we got done with the, the buyer consult, we'd hand them off. So, uh, you know, we met them, we introduced ourselves, we got squared away, and then we'd hand them off to the buyer, the buyer's agent. So I know none of you guys are really at that point yet, although it's important to, to remember that. Okay, so there are three types of buyers out there. There's A'ers buyers, there's B buyers, and there's C buyers, okay? Same concept as the pipeline. So we use the pipeline to rate what our buyers are, right? Tens, nines, eights, seven, sixes. A buyers are get them going, get them going right now. B buyers, you gotta nurture them a little bit. C buyers are you know, somebody who's down the road, may need some um, credit repair may need something else before they can purchase. Um, so <clears throat> don't ever lose a, an A buyer. A buyers are the ones that, you know, come into an open house or, you know, called you and said, I'm ready to buy. You know, those are the tens, right? Those are the ones that you really want to focus on. Uh, in our buyer presentation, and we're going to kind of go over the buyer presentation in a little bit, uh, the home buying process is all basically on one page. Uh, we had uh, we had a wheel that we used to use and it had like 20 items on it and they kind of scaled it down a little bit. So just to go over those real quick is you want to select your real estate agent uh, and it's important to select your real estate agent. Uh, we want to make sure you get a pre-approval letter. I don't really want to show you homes until you get a pre-approval letter. Um, that way we can know what you're looking for, what you can afford, all that good stuff, right? Um, and we want to make sure we have a buyer consultation, which is, you know, going through that process. Um, uh, then you kind of talk to them about the inter the MLS and, hey, I'm going to send you listings. Um, or what we really like to do is we would set them up on our website first. And then on our website, then they can go in and make changes to it. They can set up a new search. They can do whatever they wanted on our website. And then once we took them out a couple of times and we got a good idea of what they're looking for, or even the first time, then we would switch them over to the MLS, right? Because on the MLS, only we can make those changes. So um, on the, the website, you know, when they're brand new and they're kind of first looking, they can make adjustments. If they make adjustments, then you can see what those adjustments are. And then remember, you know, and I hate saying this, right? Buyers are liars. It's not really that they're liars. It's just that they don't, they don't understand how the system works and they don't understand what they're really looking for yet. Until you take them out and show them some homes, they, they got an idea and they see pictures on the internet, although they're really not drilling that down to what their wants and needs are, right? So... So kind of tell them how the process works um, and then go from there. And then if they select homes or they see homes that they really like, um, then have, you know, then you're going to. What's that? 
Brother, can you put uh, six packs of uh, uh, whole wheat naans aside for me? This is Masood. Sure, be happy to. Um, Masood, I, I don't know. I just muted you, so. <laughs> um, so let's say select homes and you go out there. Now, if your client's on the internet and they search for a house and it didn't show up in your search, the, the, the script is, hey, you just sent me a house that isn't in our original search. What has changed, right? How did you find this one when it's not in what we already talked about, right? Because now you've changed the criteria on me. So, you know, what, where did you find this one? What's different about it? What did you search differently that made this one show up, okay? Same thing when you're out showing them houses. If they, you know, if they come up to you, uh, sorry, just before the meeting, just for your meeting, I'm gonna show houses and say, hey, look, I found this one. Well, this one didn't either fit our criteria or didn't show up because it's not what you asked me to search for you. So how did this one come up, okay? Um, you know, the other thing is when they're, when you're out driving around and they see a house and they say, Hey, let's see that one. It's in the neighborhood we want, you know, Hey, that one didn't fit your criteria. If it fit your criteria, it would have shown up. And if it would have shown up, then we would have, uh, we would have gone looked at it. For some reason it didn't show up in your criteria. Therefore we should not go see it. I'll pull it up on my phone and look at it, although there's probably something that's going on. All right, then you talk to them about writing an offer. Um, it's always a good idea to give them a copy of a blank offer and say, hey, when you get ready to put in an offer, please read this so that when we do put an offer, you're ready to go. These are the terms and stuff that we're gonna talk about. Um, I'm not gonna go over all 12 pages with you uh, right now. I just want you to, to understand what that looks like and what it looks like different at different points and then um, step seven is we get mutual acceptance on the property uh, step eight is we conduct inspections to resolve any issues um, now number seven if you want to talk to them about what the market looks like that's a great time to do it right hey i just want to let you know that right now inventory is at 0.5 months what that means is a seller's market is anywhere from one to four months. So if we're at 0.5, we're at the very bottom of the seller's market. So it can be, it is more a seller's market right now than it has ever been. Okay. So I just want to tell you that what that means is we may have to put in multiple offers to get a home. So don't be discouraged if you don't find your house on the first go. It may take us a little bit. I just want you to be patient. And unfortunately, it's a, you know, it's going to be a patient process. Um, what I do always tell them is, look, <clears throat> don't fall in love with a house until I give you the keys. Okay, once I give you the keys, you can absolutely fall in love with it. Until then, don't, right? Because it's not yours. Don't fall in love with it until I hand you the keys. Once you fall in love with it, we lose all negotiating power, okay? It's harder for us during the inspection. It's harder for us to put in an offer. There's a lot of things. So just really, really like it. Just don't fall in love with it, all right? Um, we're gonna do an inspection. I, I got a sheet that I'm gonna give you later that has uh, three inspectors on it. The top one on the list is my most favorite, although you're gonna wanna interview them and kind of go from there, okay? Um, there's somebody who wants to enter the room and I don't know who they are. I got Zoom bombed the other day. So I'm, I'm being a little more careful who I let in. So I didn't see a name or anything. All I saw was the 4LQKZD. So it made me a little bit nervous. <clears throat> um, that was not pretty, by the way. That was, that was kind of interesting. All right, so the next step is number nine, which is obtain funds and close on the property. Um, I do want to warn you, this is going to be a brutal process. Uh, your lender is going to ask you for stuff that nobody should ever ask you for. Just be ready for it. It's not yeah. as easy to get a loan these days as it used to. And they're going to ask you for some crazy papers. So just be ready for that, okay? Um, 
And if you need help, let me know. If you need help delivering stuff, let me know. I'm more than happy to help you with that. Our last step is you're going to take possession of your new home. Um, that usually close that usually occurs at 9 p.m. on the day of closing. Although since it is such a tight buyer or seller's market, um, we may have to give them some free rental after closing. And that's a negotiating employee. It all depends on what the seller wants. And we can talk about that when it gets ready to happen, okay? So those are 10 easy points just to explain them. If you wanna go into more detail, you can go into more detail, but this is what they're looking for. They wanna know what each step of the process is and go into it with them step by step by step, okay? So they feel comfortable. Um, and you're gonna go a little more in depth too. Um, one of the big safety tips is if you don't know these people, uh, bring them into the office, meet them at the office. Uh, we used to take a copy of their driver's license just in case something happened or you know, we weren't, we weren't really sure about them. If you ever get to the point where you don't feel comfortable, call the office, ask if there's anybody here and go meet them with somebody else. Um, don't meet them on your own if you're not 100% comfortable, okay? Now, the buyer consult, what you're going to do is you're going to assess their wants and needs. Now, my script during my open houses is, hey, at Berkshire Hathaway, we do things a little bit differently. Uh, we like to bring you into the office and do what's called a buyer consultation. During this buyer's consultation, I'll tell you about everything that I'll tell you about the whole process and we'll go through the process. Hey, Wim. How are you? Or things. Did you get that Lexus or? There you go. Um, so now I got to start over because I can't do the script in the middle, right? Because it's a script, right? So, hey, this is Paul Pring with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. We tend to do things a little bit differently. Um, I'd like to bring you into a, our office and do what's called a buyer consultation. During that buyer consultation, um, I'm going to show you what the, the home buying process is. And I'm going to ask you what your wants and needs are so I get a better understanding of what you're looking for in a home. When, is it, when are you available? Monday at 6 o'clock or Tuesday at 5 o'clock? Okay, so I'm driving them into an appointment. Now, you'll notice I said in there wants and needs. Now, a long time ago, we, did, we used to do scripts practice. And when we did scripts practice, we would call the receptionist and do the script with her and you know she didn't know which script we were doing now one of the people left off what are your wants and needs and she came in and said don't you want to know what my wants and needs are so it's very important that you put that in there right i want to know what your wants and needs are right so make sure that's in there the other thing you're going to do with your buyer consult is show them exactly what you're going to do for them um, and there's a page in the buyer consult that breaks down everything that you're gonna do as a real estate agent for them. So if you ever get that question uh, with, you know, can I get a rebate or can I do this or I can do that? You, when you get to this page, you say, look, these are all the things I'm gonna do for you, okay? It's not just driving you around and showing you a house. That's the easy part. It's not just getting your offer accepted. It's getting the home closed so you can actually move into it, right? Now your goal of the buyer consult always is to get a signed buyer's agency agreement. And I'm gonna go over a script with you that kind of shows you how to do that, okay? Because if you don't have a buyer's agency agreement, especially in this day and age, um, you may, you're gonna run into two problems. One is somebody can easily steal your client, right? And two, in this market now, we're arguing about commission. Um, there are real estate companies out there that are, you know, not honoring or not doing the two and a half, three percent, and they're only offering you a percent. So how are you going to protect that? And how are you going to show your value to make sure you're getting your three percent? Okay. So, and we're going to talk a little bit about the buyer's agency agreement. Um, how many guys are doing buyer's agency agreements with your buyers? Okay, Franz, Karen, okay. Nobody else, okay. 
You got to do it every, every time, Johnny, you're doing it too. Okay, good. So that's a good habit to get into. Um, and when we were running our team, that was a requirement. If you did not give us a buyer's agency agreement, we didn't work with you. It was, it was that plain and simple. I'm not going to take you out and show you houses just so you can use another agent, right? The buyer's agency agreement also gives you a little bit of a buffer. So if your client's not happy with you, um, they got to have a conversation with you. Hey, I'm not happy. You know, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. I know we have a buyer's agency agreement. You know, I want to get out of that or, you know, whatever that looks like. So gives you one more chance to keep them. Okay, so during the uh, eight steps of the buyer consult, set the stage, uh, you only have one chance for a great appointment, right? For a great impression. So make it a great impression. Show them how professional you are as a real estate agent. I guarantee you probably, you know, maybe 30% of real estate agents are doing buyers consultations. And out of that 30%, maybe, 50% of them are doing buyer console or buyer agency agreements. Okay. Now, if you come into my office and you say, <coughs> Hey, this, this guy um, uh, got stolen by somebody at an open house. What's going to be my first question. Did everybody get frozen or. So they go into the open house. Wait, so you're at the open house and they come in the open house. Is that what you said? No, your clients go to an open house and they get stolen oh. by the agent in an open house. <laughs> I didn't you walk into my know. office. What's going to be my first question? Uh, did you not inform your clients that if they want to see property, they kind of ask you first <laughs> and or give them business cards. So if and when you happen to be out and about and somebody asks you if you're working with the agent, say, yeah, here, you know, here's our card. Yeah, I'm not going to answer those questions. <laughs> My first question is going to be Did you sign the contract of buyer so agency? Buyer's agency. Do you have a yeah. buyer's agency agreement. Because if you don't have a buyer's agency agreement, that buyer was never yours. All right? That buyer was kind of yours, kind of not, kind of, you know. So if you didn't have one, then you're not entitled to anything. And those clients can be stolen by another real estate agent and nobody has to call you and tell you you're fired, okay? All right, so you're gonna explain the closing process. You're gonna close for the signed agency agreement. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, you're gonna cover the mortgage process, talk about making an offer. We kind of already went over these, right? Yeah. All right, um, we are going to do a um, buyer agency agreement uh, role play. So I will show you um, exactly how we used to do our, our uh, by our agency and we'll, we'll send you the link for that. Um, also on the website, um, there are buyer agency um, presentation already built up for you. So you don't have to build that out. So, and I'll show you mine too. Oh, here it is. So this is the buyer's agency agreement or the buyer's agency pre or buyer consultation presentation, okay? So basically it just says, we're here for you. I'm not gonna go over the whole thing because uh, we only have an hour. Uh, so, um, you know, there's the hear me page. This page, the three expert one, this is the one that I really love um, because it shows them everything you're gonna do for them, right? I'm your trusted advisor. I'm gonna help you with all this stuff. Um, I'm also your skilled negotiator. So I'm gonna get you a great deal on your home or the greatest deal I can get you, right? And the last one is I'm an expert facilitator because 90% of getting you the home is, is getting, after we get the purchase and sale signed, is getting into closing. So that is the hard part. Easy part's finding the house. Semi easy part is getting an offer accepted. The really hard part is getting that baby to close, okay? Ooh. so. In, in that three experts in one thing, uh, uh -huh. do you go through, you just hit the the purple points. You don't have to like go through each one. Do you say you can read over this, you know, after I leave or whatever? Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, cause you don't want to go over all this stuff. I mean, yeah. you really want them to see how much is on the page. I mean, 
there's this this same page is in the listing presentation. Yeah. So when somebody says to you, hey, will you reduce your commission? You go to this page and say, you know, these are all the things I'm going to do for you. The first one is I'm your advisor. The second one is I can save you thousands and thousands of dollars through negotiation. And I'm going to get you the best deal I possibly can. And then you tell them, look, you know, the easy part is selling your home. Anybody right now can sell your home. Throw it up on the market, put it at the right price. I am going to be your excellent facilitator to make sure this deal goes all the way to closing. Okay. And then they can look at all this and go, ah, you know, same thing for a first sale by owner. This is a great sheet to give a first a for sale by owner. So, hey, I just want to let you know that you're going to have to be all these things. So if you're not good at any of these things or some, you know, not most of these things, then you need to hire a real estate agent. Okay. Because these are all the things you're going to run into. All right. All right, and then getting started, the getting started process. What are you looking for? What do you want to know? The roadmap, uh, which we went over in the beginning. This was the roadmap that we went over. Um, get pre-approved, um, you know, which is the, the most important part. Um, always give them two lenders. You know, here's my favorite lender. Here's a backup, just in case you don't gel with the first one. Um, I would interview both of them. Um, I would also let both of them know that you're interviewing. Um, and I would let my lenders know, hey, I'm going to give two cards out. I'm not just going to give one out. So it's up to you to win these guys because, you know, you are an extension of me. If you screw up, you're not screwing up just for you. You're screwing up for both of us. So because I recommended you. So um, and I would always let them know, hey, I'm, I'm going to give you two and, and, you know, make sure they know that you're shopping this around so you get the best deal up front right um then we're going to get into the home search and i'm going to ask you a bunch of questions um i'm going to put you on my website then once we get rolling a little bit further i'll put you on the mls and then we'll go from there okay um, what i really want to get to is um the questionnaire so um, again we're going to write an offer these are the things that are going to be um you know, these are going to be the important things. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the seller what's the most important thing. And then we're going to gear your offer towards that. And we're going to make sure we do these other things. So there's going to be a lot of things that come up with this. Uh, we're going to talk about Pinnacle, of course. Uh, Pinnacle is more for the list side, not really the buy side. Um, although it's still good, right? And then a seamless transaction. Now, what I want to do is... is um, so in our buyer packet, we also have uh, 40 some odd questions, okay? So you can see, and we'll send this to you when we're done with the class. So Caitlin, if you could remind me, that'd be awesome. Um, we'll send this to you. Now, what I tell people, and I always have two of these. I have one of them that I give to them, right? So I have a buyer, a buyer consult packet. In the buyer consult packet is all these questions. Along with that, it's these forms. So I got a buyer's agency agreement. I have an ins inspector disclosure. Um, there's a slight typo there. Um, I have the agency disclosure. I have the agency pamphlet. I have the Berkshire Hathaway forms, right? The, the disclosure form and the consumer. And I have the lead-based paint form, um, not the form, the packet, right? So the, and we, we also do the mold packet. Now, the agency law, the lead-based paint and the mold, you can, all, you can send them all electronically. It's up to you. A lot of real estate agents like to have the agency form filled out or signed or initialed. You don't need to do that. That's an extra step. Uh, along with the agency, the 42 agency disclosure, it says at the very top, um, I agree that I got the agency law pamphlet. So that takes care of that for you. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, so that, you know, and if you do a buyer consult for every single buyer and you do this same process over and over and over and you're giving them the agency law, if it ever gets called out on you and you ever have to go to court, you say, um, uh, you know, this is my process 
and in my process, I give everybody the agency law and I can bring out 10 people here that I've done this with before and I can show them that this is my process, okay? So totally up to you. Now, um, the questionnaire, it's very important that you know what your client's disc are. If your client's a high D, there's no way you're gonna go through all 47 questions, okay? So know the questions that you wanna ask if you've got somebody who's very impatient. If you have a high C in the room, somebody who's compliant, you're probably going to have to do them all because they're going to go home and look at it. And they're going to, why didn't they ask me this question? Why didn't they ask me this question? Right? So your buyer consult should be no more than one hour. You have to be very good at your buyer consult and practice, um, practice everything so that when you walk in there, you're not doing it off the cuff, right? Now, I'm not gonna go over all these questions. I'm gonna go over some of them, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to go over these also, and you can pare this down. You don't have to use all of these. We can give you this in a Word doc, and you can go through and, and get rid of a lot of these, okay? Very simply, who's the primary contact, and what is the best time and the way to reach that individual? Okay, and they'll tell you the preference. Text is best, email is best, call me, whatever. Uh, what is prompting your move? This is probably the simplest, most important question out of the whole thing, right? What is your motivation for moving? Because if you run into a time where they're not as motivated as they were in the beginning, then you always come back to this. You know, you said that you wanted to move to Arizona, right? Or you wanted to move to Bobby Lake because you really want to be on the lake or your kids are closer or whatever, right? It doesn't matter what that motivation is. You're just always going to go back to it if they get a little swirly on you, right? When do you need to be in your new home? Now, you can do the buyer consult at any time. If somebody says to you, hey, I think about buying in six months, great. We do things a little bit differently here. I'd love for you to come in and do a buyer consult. During that buyer consult, I'll tell you what the home buying process is and find out exactly what your wants and needs are. So come on in. I know you're not buying for six months. Let's go over all these things so you're prepared in four to five to six months when we start looking for a home, okay? Are you pre-approved? Well, no, I'm not. Great. I have two great lenders that I'd love to give you. Okay. Here's their information. Make sure you tell both of them that you're that you're calling and you're shopping to somebody else. Okay. Now we cannot really go search for homes. We can't look for homes until we know what you're pre-approved for. So we really need to get that process going, and it doesn't take very long. Now remember. 46% of all buyers will not contact a lender because they're afraid of rejection, okay? That is a huge number. That's one in two almost, all right? So you gotta make them feel comfortable and let them know, hey, worst case scenario, they tell you can't buy now. That's good information to have so we can help you through that process to get approved so that when you are ready, right? Or, or so to get done, so we know when you are ready and to get you squared away, okay? And then what's your price range, all right? Now, then it starts getting into, um, you know, who will be living in the home? Who else will be spending time in the home? Do you need to accommodate any special needs? Do you have pets? Um, do you have any other special needs? Um, this is a question that's in here that I would never ask. Is there anything I should know about your lifestyle that I have not asked? I don't want to know about your lifestyle, All right? Don't need to know that. So I never, ever asked that question. So you might want to take that one out. All right, tell me about your ideal location. What is your maximum commute time and distance? So they would tell you what their maximum commute time and distance is. And what I would do is I would find out where their job is get their job address, and from their job address, I would put that into my GPS 
so that when we came to a home, they would ask me, how far am I from work? I just pull it up in my GPS, right? This is how far away you are. So that's great information to have. Uh, what is your um, commute times is very important too, because if you're doing it at three o'clock in the morning, your compute time is different than if you do it at eight o'clock in the morning, okay? What's your, in, in, are schools important? Is there any view you are seeking? What else is important about the location? <coughs> do you have a preference for when the house was built? Do you have a house uh, in move-in condition? Are you looking for any structures such as green up, blah, blah, blah? So you're gonna wanna go through these. Now, one of the questions in here is, what size lot are you looking for? Now that's an important question, but with that question, you gotta dig a little deeper. These people could have moved from New York where a 10 by 10 is a huge lot, right? You and I, half acre is a huge lot, right? So you gotta really drill that down and define it. And you really gotta do that with all these questions. So <clears throat> you go through all these questions and you're taking notes while you're doing it. They could take notes on their sheet too. It doesn't really matter. And then what I would do once I was done is I would copy this and give it to them. Say, okay, this is what we discussed. Now we're gonna go look for your perfect house, okay? Now, when we did that, <clears throat> once we were done with all that, I would pull up homes on the MLS right then and there. Okay, based on your criteria, Boom, this is what is gonna show up. Now, what do you think typically happened when I pulled up stuff on the MLS? Total sticker shock. Either nothing would show up in their price range or one or two would show up. If one or two would show up, I'd say, hey, here's one or two that are available in the MLS. Nothing else based on your criteria is showing up. Which one would you like to buy? And they're like, whoa, 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 hold on, we need to go see houses. Okay, but only two are showing up. And they're like, well, we need more to see, great. Which of your criteria would you like me to back off on so I can pull up more houses for you? Well, we really don't need this, we don't really need that. Now it starts to get more reasonable, right? So now maybe 10 houses are gonna show up. Okay, so now we have 10 to, to look at. Um, are these homes that you are available to see today or tomorrow or this weekend or whatever? And then we would schedule a time to see the homes, okay? So once we're done with that, said, okay, I got some paperwork here that I would like for you to, to go over with me. Now, um, I'm gonna go over each one of these forms so you feel more comfortable uh, with what's going on. So you feel comfortable with signing forms also. There will be a point in time that I'm gonna send you an email that's gonna have a bunch of um, forms in it that you're gonna wanna sign. I already gave you a copy of those. You can look over that later. So I don't want you to be shocked when you see these forms, okay? A lot of forms to sign in real estate. The first one we're gonna do is the inspector disclosure. Here's my three favorite inspectors. The one at the top is my ultimate favorite. I want you to interview them all or pick whichever one you want. Once we get a signed round offer, we're gonna need you to, to schedule an appointment with them. Your appointment's gonna to have to agree with mine. Now I can schedule them for you and tell you when it is, and then we can go from there, okay? What I typically like to do with the inspections is I'll meet the inspector there. We'll do a, probably an hour and a half to two hour inspection, and then I would love for you to show up. Let the inspector do what they're doing, do their thing, get done with it. After that, they'll walk through any issues with the home. They'll show you where the water shutoff is and a lot of that stuff. So it really goes a lot quicker and a lot more efficiently if you show up at the end instead of being there for the entire thing. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to do is the agency disclosure. This just says that I'm your real estate agent and I gave you this agency law. That's required by law. I have to give it to you. Uh, here's affiliated business arrangement. This is um, uh, Berkshire Hathaway's form. that says everybody that we do business with. Here's the anti-fraud. This is extremely important. Don't reply to any emails that you, you aren't familiar with. Um, if you have questions, ask, okay? Ask through the entire process. I don't want you to get an email that says, why are funds here? and that's the wrong place. I don't want that to happen. 
Okay, the other one is the lead-based paint. If we happen to get a house that was built prior to 1978, here's the lead-based paint. I'd also give them the mold form, right? At the same time. Now, the last form we're going to sign is a buyer's agency agreement. All this agreement does is tie you and me together and protect you from predatory agents that are out there that might try to come in and get your business. So on here, I'm going to write 3% commission and we can negotiate that once we get to a particular house. If the seller is not offering a 3% commission, this gives me the right to negotiate that on your behalf, on my behalf to get to that point. I'll probably never come up to you and say, you know, hey, you gotta pay me. Although this form really ties us together, okay? Now you can fire me at any time you want. All you gotta do is call me up and say, hey, Paul, I don't like that you're doing this, this, and this, you're fired, okay? It's as simple as that. So don't feel bad or don't feel, you know, pressured about this form. It's just like all the other ones and then go from there, okay? Any questions about that? It's very simple. All you got to do is ask. <clears throat> if somebody says, I don't want to sign that, then you can say, well, you know, what is keeping you from signing this? Well, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be tied to one agent. Great. Let me explain to you how agents get paid. Okay. I only get paid if you use me and the cloud house sells, closes. If the house doesn't close, I don't get paid. So if you've got six or seven agents out there that are looking for houses for you, five of them aren't gonna get paid for doing their work. I, I don't do that, right? I only wanna work with people who wanna work with me. And if you don't wanna work with me, I totally get it. I understand it. Let's part ways now and not after I've shown you 10 or 15 houses. Okay? so. Did anybody feel bad about that? Nope. Right? Pretty simple. Most people don't know what a buyer's agency agreement is, and you're explaining it to them. If they hum or him or hesitate, that tells you a lot. It tells you these people are not married to you. If you're not married to me, <laughs> I'm going to go find somebody that is married to me. Right? I'm not dating buyers. I don't date buyers. I only marry buyers. Okay. It's no different than signing a listing agreement with a seller. <clears throat> right? Same concept, same thing. So uh, you get a buyer's agency agreement on 100% of your buyers. Don't, don't not get one. Okay. Don't have that. Make sure you have that conversation with every single one of them. And 99% of the time, they're not going to say anything. They're just going to say, okay, and sign it. And they're going to go on their merry way. Okay. And I would say, I would say a good 50% of buyers out there don't know how we get paid. They don't understand. They think we get paid to show them houses. Well, no, I don't get paid to show you houses. I'm prepaying all these expenses prior to this. <laughs> So if you don't use me to buy a house, I'm actually out money, right? I've actually spent money to get you to this point. So, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. If you decide not to buy right now, I'm okay. I don't want you to pr feel pressured, right? I just want you to understand how I get paid, right? So, and then go from there. So with this, what do you guys think about that buyer console? It's good. I never really deemed it as that title, but um, that's what I do often. Yeah, good. Because you got to do it, right? I mean, you got to go through that process. Remember, 54% of all buyers want to know what the process is. This is your opportunity to tell them what the, the process is. Okay. Now, will I show houses to a buyer without doing a buyer council? Yeah, I'll show you one or two. After that, we kind of need to sit down so we can talk about it. Right, we can go over the process, we can talk about all that, okay? Um, and these are the different covers for the buyer consult. Um, you can find those all online. Um, as you can tell, the buyer consult is a script, right? And you can also tell I've done this a thousand times, right? So with that, you know, the scripts come up, you're gonna get those objection handlers 
and you just have to be ready for them. If you're ready for them, they're no big deal. If you go, um, 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 then you're going to, you're going to struggle and they're going to ask you, why should I sign a buyer consult? And if you don't have that right off the get go, you're, you're going to struggle with that a little bit. Okay. So, um, appointment set, get the appointment set, right. Um, and, and again, that's a script I, you know, I have my open house script that I always use. Hey, at Berkshire Hathaway, we do things a little bit differently. Um, I would like to do a buyer consult with you and tell you about the home buying process. And I'd like to find out what your wants and needs are for purchasing your next home, right? So it's all about a script, okay? Um, and then, you know, tell me, then once you get into it and then exclusivity and so on and so forth, right? Uh, renters. Um, and talking to renters about purchasing and all that, right? And, you know, rent is more expensive than purchasing right now. So that's a conversation that you have. Um, uh, yeah, so here's another script for a buyer's agency is all I ask in exchange for my superior customer service promise is that you agree to work with me exclusively. Does that sound fair? Right? Okay, we can sign and shake on that. You can't shake now. You have to use the elbow or you got to do the foot or something. No shaking. Shaking's bad. Okay. Okay. Can we sign and shake on that provided the buyer with the buyer's aid, explain it and have them sign it and shake hands. In some state, a buyer's agency agreement is required. Um, you can't show houses to them without having a buyer's agency agreement. So Colorado is like that, right? Colorado is a, an agency agreement state. So um, newlyweds is a great one too. Um, and newlyweds can turn out to be a threefer, right? You sell both houses and you, you get them to buy a house. So newlyweds are awesome. Always one, you know, divorces are threefers also, right? You sell one and right. So, um, just remember that, <laughs> keep that in mind. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a trick and I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but, um, at my old brokerage, I had an agent that uh, worked with divorce attorneys um, and she sells probably, I want to say 75 houses a year. Um, and, you know, I don't know how many of them came from the attorneys, but quite a few of them did. In the divorce decree, the attorney would put in there if, if um, you know, they call them um, petitioners, right? Petitioner one, petitioner two, blah, 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 respondent, whatever if um, parties do not agree on a real estate agent, then they will use blah, 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 real estate agent, right? So they wrote it right into the divorce decree. It had her name and had her contact information. It had everything right in the divorce decree. Awesome. Yeah. Now remember attorneys can get their real estate license without having to do anything. They can just apply for their real estate license. So as a real estate agent, you can get, or a licensee, you can get referrals. So she was giving them a 25% referral every time somebody that used her in this divorce. So that was the motivation for the attorney to put it in the divorce decree, right? So and I many it was against probate too. If you wanna get into probate, you know, go yep. talk to the probate attorney. Um, probate's a little more difficult than a divorce. Um, and hey, I mean, if you're an independent third party with the two parties, it, you, the divorce usually goes a lot easier. You know, if one party agrees to use the other one, it doesn't go so well. So yeah. All right. Practice, 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 practice. You can do your buyer consult a thousand times before you meet with your first buyer. So keep that in mind, right? There's no reason or no excuse not to have your buyer console down rock solid, even for your first buyer. Okay. So practice, 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 practice. All right. Then we threw in the lead gen and you can see the formatting is off a little bit here <clears throat> for buyers, open houses, agent to agent, social media, Facebook, Fizbo, expireds, farm, door knocking, home partners, all that good stuff, right? 
circle marketing, investors, events, networking, social media, paid leads, and home partners. <clears throat> now, if you're going to do home partners, your buyer consult is extremely important because if you don't explain the program to them and the home buying process, they're going to run you around in a circle and you're not going to close. So you don't want to spend a lot of time doing that um, without doing a buyer consult. Okay. All right, uh, practice your buyer's needs analysis. So those 40 questions or how many in there, practice those with your script partners, practice your scripts, and really, really practice your buyer consult. And you can see that the buyer consult is nothing but one big script, okay? So, you know, however you do it, I don't care. Just make sure you get it done and you're doing that practice, all right? Okay, any questions? One, one question. So, um, can you recap again? Because on my some of my buyer agencies, I put down three percent for the commission, and I'm not well practiced on how to respond to that. If they say, "Well, what if the listing is less than the seller doesn't offer a full three percent?" Then what? Yeah, so if the seller doesn't offer a 3%, then we're going to we're going to negotiate with them to um, raise that commission. I mean, most sellers will pay a higher one. They're just trying to see if they can get away with a lower one. So, I'm willing to take two and a half. I have no problems with taking two and a half. Really what you want to write in there is up to 3%. Um up to. Well, no, you're going to want to put 3% in there. Just put 3% in there. Yeah. Because then, then if you take less, then you're giving them a gift yeah. to get the deal together. Yeah. So, you know, just to let you know that if a seller is only offering 1% or, you know, one and a half or less than two and a half, three percent 3%, that tells you a lot about that seller. And that seller may be difficult later on in the process. So this might not be, a, you know, if they give us a hard time about it, this might not be a seller you want to deal with. Good point. Right? Good point. Yeah. So, you know, at no point am I going to come up to you and say, you know, hey, it's 3%. I only got two and a half. So can you write me a check for the other 0.5? <laughs> right? Now, if you go to a FISBO and expire, you call me. Right? If you go to a FISBO, you meet Johnny Blow on the street and Johnny wants to sell his house, you call me and I'll do the entire transaction and we'll get that home for you. Even if it's a for sale by owner, just call me and I'll be more than happy to call them and have a conversation with them. And again, I'll make sure they pay my commission. Now, you know, depending on what the house is structured at and, and you know, what they're selling it to you for 90% of the time I could get them to pay. If they don't want to pay and they're really giving you a great deal on the house, then yeah, I'm, I'm going to, if it's a FISBO, I'm going to ask you to pay me the two and a half percent. Ooh, that's a good spiel. Okay. Right. Because I still, if you know, I want, you know, don't take me out of the loop just because it's a FISBO and most people don't want to call a FISBO and I'm more than happy to do it. So you give me the info and I'll, I'll call them. I got no problems calling them. Excellent. Okay. You know, and if I find you a house that's off market too, um, because, you know, I just want to warn you, the market's really tight. If I go out there and I find you a home, uh, which I've been known to do, I mean, if you not just door knock, I mean, you knock on the door and run to the next one, right? You actually have to talk to people. So I love door knocking. I think it's great. You got to be careful where you door knock. I mean, yes. And I, you know, I don't say that in a security way. What I mean is, um, idiot me chose to door knock um, uh, Marine Hills. Now you would think, Mr. Real Estate Agent, that the name Marine Hills would have been an indicator that there were hills involved. So no, <laughs> didn't think that. <laughs> Had it all planned out, did it, went out, you know about two hills into it, I'm like, this was pretty stupid. Chicken. 
because every house, so here was the street, every house was elevated. So you either had to go up here or you had to go down here. So every house you had to run up 30 or 40 stairs. So I won't do that again. All right, any other questions? Was this helpful? Yes. Okay, good. All right, have a great day. It's Friday, enjoy yourself. Thanks. Thank you. Adios.